Hey hackers, Blue Cosme here. Uh, first of all, today I'm a little I'm a little sick, so I do apologize if my voice sounds a little bit more raspy than usual. But uh, second of all, I wanted to introduce you guys to some of the tools I use for my malware development. Well, first of all, I actually am not on Windows as a main. I'm on Linux. Uh, I can show you Neo. That's right. Uh, I'm on Parrot OS uh, 5.1. I'm using uh, i3 Window Manager. Uh, I'm using the conch shell. It's a Python powered shell. So I can do like, you know, X equals one. And I can do like uh, four plus five, six print like uh, hello, right? Um, so I can run Python directly into uh, my terminal, which is cool. Um, I will leave the link to this in the description if you're interested. But uh, yeah, I, I run Linux. Um, that's the <clears throat> ultimate lesson here as a way to run uh you know develop malware because you know uh, running linux as a main is kind of a little bit unusual to develop malware on linux so i do have kimu using the virtual machine manager i have a malware 10 virtual machine over here and this is malware 10 it's the virtual machine that i use for all of my malware development it's malware development on windows 10 so malware 10 is what they call it um there isn't too much crazy stuff going on with the machine there's uh what two cpus eight gigs of ram and 200 gigabytes of storage so it's like a good decent uh windows computer just virtualized right um then of course i take snapshots every week or so so yeah let me actually show you some of the tools that i use so first of all again i'm on windows 10 this is windows 10 home uh this is on a normal windows account and uh i'll go ahead and kind of go through some of the tools that i use uh first of all um for when it comes to actually editing and developing malware on this Windows machine, um, I do have Visual Studio and uh, Visual Studio Code. For Visual Studio, I just have the Community Edition, nothing crazy. Uh, that's pretty much all you need, really. Just It's free. So uh, The cool thing about the Visual Studio suite is that it gives you some of the other uh, Visual Studio tools. You see if I go down to Visual Studio 2022, you guys can see the developer command prompts and some of the other stuff from my previous video. So if you ever see me use the x64 native tools command prompt and the x86 native tools command prompt quite often. So these are pretty helpful uh, if you guys are doing malware development and stuff. Uh, so yeah, Visual Studio is definitely something I suggest getting as well as Visual Studio Code. If you're going to just do light stuff, just get code. But if you're kind of diving into the deeps and uh, doing a lot of C++ and C stuff, uh, Visual Studio is the way to go as well. So I, I just have both, but uh, it, to each their own. For Visual Studio, I'll go, ooh, spoiler for future videos. Whoops. I'll show you some of my extensions so that way you guys have a good idea of the stuff that I use on my virtual machine. So I do have the full C++ extension packs, so all the whatever comes with this extension pack is what I have. So I think it's just C, uh, the themes, C make, it has like the tools, some other stuff. Uh, I have the hex editor as well. Uh, so it's just a way you can quickly do different hex editing um, on the system. So if I go on like uh, PE deep dive, cosmo.dll, open, open the hex editor. So yeah, you can see, right, there's a basic hex editor in here. Again, I don't use it, use it too much. I have my own dedicated hex editor that I'll show later. Uh, but I mean, you can use this one if you guys want to. There's also some basic Python stuff. I just downloaded the Python thing and whatever Python came with is what Python came with. So that's where a lot of this other stuff. The theme I'm using is Lemon Tree Dark. Uh, this is that this kind of green, greenish type of theme. Uh, I might change it down the road, but uh, I kind of like it for now. Uh, I also have the NIM programming extension to help, you know, with the NIM programming language because NIM is goaded. PowerShell is another extension that I have because I do a lot of PowerShell stuff. Uh, the main Python and then Vim because um, on my Linux machine, uh, Vim is my main editor. Uh, malware, cd2, only rat, Vim, main.py, right? Um, my main editor is just, it's just Neo, it's Neo Vim. It, I, it's, I use Vim as an alias, but it is, it is Neo Vim. And yeah, I just use uh, Vim as a main editor. Why? Uh, it, it's just easy, especially if you're doing a lot of like uh, malware stuff I've always found. Just always be in my terminal easy. I can quickly check hex stuff. I can check uh, other development stuff. I could probably do a separate video for some of my Linux tools, but my Windows tools, uh, it just makes it easier to quickly work on bigger projects. Sometimes though, I will end up disabling it when doing a lot of copy and pasting outside of VS Code. So yeah, All right, I'll go ahead and close this. 
Uh, next up, I have the system internal suite. You guys can download it right here if you want. The system internal suite is a suite of tools created by Windows, uh, I believe Windows, and they have just a bunch of like random programs that help out. Um, two most notable ones that I've seen that pop up a lot are Procmon. And Procmon is a process monitor, so you can do a lot of well, process monitoring. I use this all the time for both malware development and malware analysis. And yeah, you guys can just see what everything that every process on the computer is doing. Uh, so you can see what registries it's working with, what files it's creating. Um, so if you're working with malware, you can also look at like the process tree and see like what your malware is doing. Uh, if I ever do a DLL hijacking video, I'll probably end up showing you guys this with Procmon. Uh, and on top of that, I do have uh, just some other good ones. TCP view. I use this during the PMAT um, certification training, and uh, it's good for malware analysis and some other stuff. So it's, it is just a cool, good suite to have. It can uh, end up serving pretty helpful. Uh, next up is X64 DBG. This is my favorite debugger of all time. Uh, I've been using this debugger for as long as I've been in malware, probably. It is just a great, great debugger. I've seen an interview by the developer over on OA Labs channel, I believe, and he is quite a chad. So I'm pretty sure he made this when he was like 17 or so too, which is crazy. But um, yeah, you guys can download this debugger. We used this in uh, my Trojan development video. So you guys can check that video out. Uh, Process Hacker, this is a little bit better for malware analysis, but if you are developing malware, it's a good way to kind of keep track of how your malware is moving through the system, what DLLs it might be using, what process is it's opening. So I do guess Procmon also shows you some similar information, but Process Hacker is a little bit kind of like Task Manager. Uh, it just shows you a lot of good information. So yeah, I have Process Hacker on my system and you guys can see some of like the uh, information about like different programs and what they're doing what their DLLs are like if I search this up you can see uh, a lot of the crazy information about it uh, yeah it's just a good way to monitor different tasks on the system finally I have HXD it is a hex editor it is my preferred and favorite hex editor I wish they had a dark mode but ultimately I can I can deal without it it is very helpful because their hex editor first of all it's very easy to work with right if I just go into development go into PED dive example.exe you can also export stuff to other languages right so if I like go down here and let's say there was like some shell code that we wanted to analyze or something uh, you could actually like select a good chunk of this hit file export and you can export the hex to a specific language so if you want to use it in something you can uh, i'll usually export it to see and include shellcode that i find in other malware to analyze or to like uh work with in a malware environment so it's pretty cool yeah, those are pretty much all my main main tools uh, those are the ones i find myself using the most i do have a video of me showing how i actually made this virtual machine so all the tools of me installing it was a live stream of just me installing setting up this virtual machine so if you guys are curious on the steps i kind of went with uh, you guys can be sure to watch that video uh but yeah, that's going to be it for today thank you guys for watching really appreciate you guys checking out the channel uh, make sure to leave a like and subscribe and as always happy hacking